Thank you for tuning in. This is DJ Bob Crash from SegaShiro.com, the Sega resource. And today we're doing a video review of a DS game. This is the first DS game we've ever reviewed, so give us a little bit of leeway. There's some times where the footage is a little wobbly, but we're doing our best. We're trying our hardest. And uh, this is a review of Fantasy Star Zero. Now, for core Sega fans, this is a series that needs no introduction. Sega fans have loved the Fantasy Star franchise right from the early days on the Master System, and it continues its legacy here on the DS. As a standalone product on the DS, this package is actually quite incredible. The graphics are, are pretty amazing, and it, it's impressive hardware tech running on the DS for sure. Once you factor in all of the co-op options and the free online wireless play, it, it's pretty hard not to be impressed with this package on the DS. However, that also leads to one of the problems. Because of the DS and its shortcomings as a piece of hardware, if you're moving from a console version of Fantasy Star to the DS version, you'll see some various limitations that wouldn't be otherwise present in other versions. For example, like other Fantasy Star games, you can choose between the three races. This is the Newmans, the Humans, and the Casts. Um, I've chosen to be a human. As you can see, I've put quite a few hours into this game. And the hub and the system actually work quite well. You sort of run around in the town, you can buy items and other such features. And then when you go to the quest counter, you can actually set up your quests or choose what you want to do. Choose your party members. One cool feature about this game that I actually didn't think was going to be present were Xbox style achievements. And so depending on what you do through the game, whether you beat the first boss in under a minute, or if you pet all the cats in the township, you'll actually get extra rewards for locking the game. And that's a pretty cool feature that I thought it was in there. It sort of gave you extra reasons to keep playing the game beyond the combat and the storyline. Now, if you choose a different race in the game, you'll get slightly different storylines. Um, it all follows sort of one basic arc, but there are different changes in conversation that you'll have. And uh, I actually really enjoyed the characters in this game, the main characters, like Saris. And I really enjoyed the art style as well. I played a bit of Fantasy Star Universe, and I didn't like the main character. I didn't feel that they were accessible, but here, really, your character is your own. You choose answers to questions you can really build it your own, and all of the supporting cast are actually quite enjoyable. Now the combat in Final Fantasy Zero is decidedly old school. Sort of the Dreamcast system of time combat and button presses is back, and for some gamers this will be a major annoyance. They'll think that the gameplay is kind of flawed, that it's, it's old school, and I think it's done by choice. Really, in this game, it's kind of, it feels a lot more like the Dreamcast version and it takes a little bit of timing and skill to kind of get your attacks across and get your chains across. Um, and that's sort of how the game evolves beyond just being a straight just button masher. In other ways, other people will argue that it is just a straight button masher regardless, but if you're a Fantasy Star fan, if you've been a part of the franchise for a long time, that those concerns won't bother you. It's more for new gamers um, who are getting into the franchise, that combat would be one thing, which you spend a ton of the time in the game doing, might be a thing that you might want to try before you actually sit down and purchase it. Overall, I found the story to be actually kind of humorous. It was kind of quaint and cute. Um, I enjoyed that about it. Um, there's also tons of loot to collect. If you're in it for the loot, in it for the different items, there's a lot you can do there. However, the gameplay really rewards you for sticking up sticking to one item, one sword, and really leveling it up to its to its highest point. All of the regular uh, RPG elements are still intact in this title, so leveling up your items, leveling up your characters, uh, fashioning your weapons with photon power-ups, um, and different fashioning them with elements, that's still in the game, and also upgrading and feeding your mags and pumping them up as well are still a part of the package. They add an extra element of of uniqueness in this game and, and really make it enjoyable. Where this game really shines though is in the online play. So if you have buddies that are sort of local, you can do ad hoc multiplayer and that's a lot of fun. Once you kind of get beyond that though, there is network uh, where you actually can sign on. This doesn't require friends codes, 
This is what I'm playing currently on screen right now. And you will just be joined up and match made with other members and you can just get right into battling, get right into the environments and just run through and level up and do everything you would do in the normally game without the story. However, if you do have friends codes and you're on the sake of forums and you're trading those codes, uh, you can actually play with other people and there's full chat features enabled. You can sit there just talking and it's really quite accessible and really quite impressive of an online package that's also for free that's right on your DS. Um, it, they really managed to get that massively multiplayer experience uh, right in the palm of your hands, which is, which is a little bit incredible. Obviously one of the biggest complaints I've heard from Sega gamers about this title is that it's not on the Wii or it's not on the 360. Or they're like, oh, I have to get a handheld uh, device. And, and while that's true, um, Sega's done an admirable effort porting that Fantasy Star experience, warts and all, to the DS. If you're Fantasy Star Hardcore, you're going to love what you get here. If you're new to the franchise, um, it's hack and slash gameplay may feel a little bit dated, but what you're getting in the online package is pretty incredible for the DS. This is DJ Fob Fresh signing out, saying keep on gaming.